The back cover, real simple. You just have this piece from um, the 12 by 12 collection, this big mushroom paper. And this is measuring out at like seven and mm, an eighth, a little more than seven and an eighth. This is the red oval paper. This is two, actually this is two and a half inches. So two and a half inches by seven and 15 sixteenths, and then cut this paper to fill it in. And that's it for the back side. Again, I use score tape on all of mine, and I think that looks really nice. Now for the spine. Let me see if I can lay this out. Find the center of my album. This poor album's taken such an abuse. I've been using it to demonstrate. So, so this is the album. So here we have this blue oval paper on the front, red oval paper on the back, and then we have a three inch spine so this is just almost three inches of the blue oval paper again. So it's just kind of continuation of the front blue oval paper, almost three inches by seven and 15 sixteenths. So you ink that, put that down, make sure you ink these before you put them down. And then I just put this little element from the chipboard elements, this happy things with these little kiddos I stuck in some brads in there, cut off their tails, and just kind of glued those in there. I inked all around the edges here. I cut out a piece of the solid red that is um, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch wide. I cut out a strip here. It fits underneath it slips underneath this little chipboard element and it's going to be fitting right under this piece from the ephemera pieces, Hello Ladybug. I ink that, put that on solid red, a little solid red um, circle punch. And then I put that on another piece of the red that has the this red from the patterns and solids just to kind of break it up so circle punch there that outer circle punch is about one and a half inches the inner circle punch one and a quarter inches and then I just added that hello ladybug from the ephemera collection and ink the edges on all of these. Slipped this red piece of paper underneath, but on top of that red piece of paper was this yellow paper, the little hearts from the eight by eight. And this is five eighths of an inch. So this was three quarters, the red was three quarters of an inch wide. The yellow paper is five eighths of an inch wide the entire strip because it's fitting underneath the hello ladybugs and this this chipboard element is probably around five and a quarter inches long and then i just inked these little ladybugs from the chipboard um, pieces inked around the edges and then just had them climbing up blue green blue going like that so you can see how they how they are so now we're going to tr i'm going to try to show you what i did with this front cover so first thing we're going to do is i made a shaker card if you guys know how to meet you do a shaker card you don't need to watch this part um, this is my shaker card. I just thought it would be kind of fun. 
especially for a little one to have a shaker card up front. So this is the shaker card. So let's see how I made this. I decided to make it round, which is probably going to be, it makes it harder than if it was a rectangle, but that's what I decided. So I have these resting circle dies. It's, it's this one, the framelits from Sizzix. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I got the three, the three biggest ones. One, two, three. So to make the frame, this, this width of a frame, what I used was this outer, the outer um, die, not the next one, but these two. So that is going to give you this shape, which is the, the shape of um, the frame over our shaker card, our shaker thing. So you, you put these down in your die machine. So what I did to make the frame, I just used the red solid um, paper. So I just used th this red solid paper. I taped it down. You're going to have to tape it down. Use your washi tape or some other tape that's removable. You just tape it one ring down at a time. Send it through your die cut machine and then you're going to come up with a piece like this only it's going to be in red that was for the red frame for the acetate window where did i put my acetate window I've got so much stuff here and i can't see it where did it go Here it is. It's easy to get lost for my acetate window. Here we have our rings again. So remember we made the frame with these two, not this ring. So we made the frame with that. For the acetate window, you are going to be using the second frame. Not the outer, not the inner, but the second frame. And you're just going to cut out a circle. That's what's going to be cut out, but you are putting that over acetate. So you are cutting out a round circle acetate window. Then on your frame, so say this is your red frame, you are going to be adhering this acetate window on the front. Well, here's the front of your frame. You're going to be adhering this acetate window on the back side of the frame like that. How do you adhere it? Number one, you cannot use water-based glue because it won't adhere. You can use a solvent-based glue, like your three-in-one, or you can use score tape. Score tape will hold it down. So if you use score tape, you just have to be mindful going all the way around, making sure you cover up end-to-end -end. I've seen people do this where they actually bend the score tape so it goes around the edges of the acetate. So I'll do that with this one. I should be using my one quarter inch tape. 
Actually, let me get my one quarter inch tape. Let's see if I can do that. And just kind of squish it and go all the way around. I actually used my three in one glue, but I'm going to see if this works too. So you do not want to use art glitter glue. It's a water-based glue. So let's see. Let's see what happens with this. So let me adhere this down. Those of you that know how to make shaker cards, you don't even need to watch this. And then I'm just gonna take it off. Well, actually, I'm gonna leave it on because I don't want it to stick to anything right yet. Right yet. I'm just gonna leave it on. I don't want it to sticking, stick to anything. So you have your front piece, you have your frame. Now, what a lot of people with their, um, shaker cards do they use foam they use foam and i bought a bunch of foam i bought a bunch of this foam to go around to make to um, give me some elevation going all the way around um, I tried it and I did not like it because I did not like the white showing. You, you, it, this is white foam. There is no black foam. So you're going to see the white foam showing through the shaker card. So if you look at mine, there is no white inside. Did not like it. So what I did which was kind of a pain. I got a 110 pound card stock. I made some more of those frames with the outer circle and this inner circle. Went ahead and put my washi tape down. So let me just run this one, one piece through my die machine. So let me get this centered. So first I'll just put the outside frame and then I'll center my inside frame. Now I'm going to put it through my die machine. So put it through and we are left with another one of these frames. Only now this is from a 110 pound cardstock. So what, it, what I did is I made seven, seven or nine. I can't even remember what I did. I just kept um, gluing them together. I made one, did another one, made another one, and I stacked them up on each other till I got a little over an eighth of an inch. That's what I did. So my, I don't know if you can see it on here, but these are all, this is just stacked. Let's see, can you see it? Um, that is just stacked cardstock, that black. So where it's raised in here, oops, raised, this is just seven, eight, nine, I can't tell. I don't, I didn't, I, I just stacked them till I got a little over an eighth inch. So that's what I did. I just stacked them together. So I glued them, stacked them, glued them, stacked them till I got an eighth of an inch. 
For this demonstration, I am going to try to use the foam just to show you kind of how they do it with foam. So you put one layer of this foam, it's not enough. So I just went around, I'm gonna pull the tape on the top part of it. And then I'm going to go around and put a second layer of the foam all the way around. Right on top of the other, you just kind of squish it and kind of bend it to shape. So it goes around the circle. There's going to be sequins and little beads in here, so you want to make sure there's no opening. If you guys have some suggestions on how to do this better, let me know. I watched about 20 different videos on shaker cards and I tried a bunch of different ones and came up with just doing my stacked cardstock. I just like the way it looks. It just looks so clean. And I don't like the black, the, the foam showing on the side of, of my album cover too. So, okay, where's the end here? Let me pull. Actually, I'm not going to pull the end yet because I need to do something. So I got that. Now, we need to put a background in here. So the background we are going to be using is, where is my, here it is. This is from the 8x8. I'm using this guy. And we are going to be cutting with the second ring. Not the first ring. Not the third ring. So those are three rings. We are going to be cutting with the second ring. So you're going to be cutting that. So let me go ahead and put on my washi tape and I'm just going to put it right here. Is that about where I put it? Yeah, about right there. And I'm going to put it, send it through my, my trimmer, my die cutter. Okay, so this little guy has now been cut. And this is a little bit stronger than, um, the images you're going to get from your paper. So that's why I use that. Now, where's our front? Where is the front? So this is the front and what you're going to notice when you use acetate, it is, it's got, what's that called? Everything clings to it. Everything is going to cling to it. It's got a lot of static electricity. So things just kind of stick to it. So I just put that piece of paper, it's just sticking to it. So I have an anti-static bag, this anti-static bag, which I got. Let's see, does this help? You have to go all the way around it. I didn't find it helped a lot. Didn't seem to help me. And then I got this from, this is an elk tool, a powder tool applicator. I think basically it's baby powder. And what you do is you run it, you just kind of put some on here, rub it around, do both sides. And this gets into the corners too. This seemed to help better but it did leave a little powder, but I kind of wiped it off. But that seemed to help a little bit better. I've also seen people use dryer sheets. 
but you have to do something not so much on the outside but on the inside where this is going to be contacting um, your sequence so i did my anti-static so this is going to go on top this is going to go behind our raised element it's going to be like this so this you can just uh, affix onto onto the cardstock here. Here you can use glue because it's going to be paper over paper. So I'm just going to make a use a ring of art glitter glue on this, just on the outside. Fix this down. Try to get it centered. So that's down. Now this is where you're going to be adding your sequence into this, this space. Let me cover my glue. And you might want to do a little anti-static on this because just in case. Now the problem with this foam tape. This foam tape is sticky. So once you take off the foam tape, what I did is I used use this powder tool because you can get in the crevices where the, the foam tape is. You do not want your sequin sticking to the foam tape. So where did I put my sequences? I'll just use these. I just got a collection of fairly flat sequins. I tried to pick some that had the colors, the red, the blue, the green, and some gold and some crystal type stuff and you just kind of put them in there and let me see what I haven't used the foam so I'm going to be putting this on top of the foam so let me pull the foam here all the way around Do not want to get my sequins on the sticky part of that foam. Ooh, my fingers are stuck. And then I guess I don't need to pull this, but I will my score tape probably don't need to pull the score tape but anyway this is going to go down on here this was our red frame and now you have your little shaker And it doesn't stick if you don't use the this stuff. All these are going to stick to the foam, to the glue on the foam. So what I didn't like was the white on the outside and the white that you see inside the shaker. I just didn't like that. What I was thinking maybe you could do is get, um, let me get one, an acrylic paint brush. 
So let me just see if this would even work. Let's just do, uh, let's just do the red. Oops. Don't know if this will even work, but this is, I thought maybe we can paint. I don't have a black one. If I had a black one, I'd use a black one. I tried it with um, Sharpie. Sharpie didn't, didn't, didn't work. And maybe this isn't going to work because I already stuck down. That might work. I should have painted it before I put down the frame. But that might work if you use a, an acrylic... Um, They call them acrylic paint markers. It's basically paint. Or if you have some paint and a paintbrush, you can try that too. So that might work. So that's how you're going to make the shaker. So that's your shaker. Pretty easy to make. And I think I'm going to be making more shakers and try different things. Because um, I just think they're, they're so much fun. So not too bad, right? Not too bad. The hard part with my method was cutting all those pieces out one at a time, one at a time, and then gluing them together, let the glue dry, and then stacking them up. But it's the same principle. So that's, that's this, that's the shaker. So we're gonna put that aside. So we made our shaker card. Um, one other thing I was just trying, here is a little strip of 65 pound card stock. Just a little scrap that I found. I thought, well, maybe I can put that, just put some, some glue in here and put that to go all the way around. That looks pretty good, don't you think? Might need to make it a little bit wider. This was just a scrap I found in my trash can. Make that go all the way around. Cover up the foam. Looks actually really sweet. And I thought, well, maybe I can do that to the inside of the shaker card too. So, I'm sure no one is going to mind the white that's in there. Does that even bother anybody um, other than me? But maybe I could do that with the black going around inside too, because um, using foam is a lot easier than cutting all those 65 pound, um, 110 pound cardstocks over and over again and gluing them together. So I'm going to mess around with this and see what I come up with. But that would probably be a good idea. What do you guys think? And if you guys have any other suggestions, let me know. But anyway, we've got our sugar card. That's the only thing we've done so far. So next, we are going to be applying our, our background papers. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to get this green dotted paper and let me show you this is the green dotted paper from the 8x8 collection it has not been used I used this whole sheet so you're going to put the green dotted paper you're not going to trim it at all on the width my front I make them this is eight inches tall, I make this seven and fifteenth, sixteenth inches tall. I have the tiniest of reveal. You can see the tiniest of reveal at the top. So get this piece from the eight by eight. Just go ahead and cut it by seven and fifteen sixteenths. Ink the edges and adhere that down. There goes my computer again. 
And I'm just gonna put a little bit of washi tape to kind of hold it in place because I don't want to waste this paper. So the so how you're going to finish off this end because you have this strip down here is you are going to get this paper. Here is your oval blue paper again. Once again, you are going to cut this. What size? Whatever size you need to fill in this little area and be mindful this is the spine right here so you don't want it right to the edge you want to give yourself some space for the spine so i cut mine and i'm going to put this down here so i have a little bit of black reveal between the green paper and the blue oval pa paper and i have enough space um, from my spine <coughs> excuse me this one I'm, I'm going to put down. This paper I don't care about. It's just scrap pieces of paper. And like I said, I normally don't use art glitter glue on anything. But I'll put it down here just to save my tape and get that down. So, so far you have... The blue oval paper and the green paper. Next you're going to get this yellow paper. This is from your patterns and solids. So it's this one with the words. I don't have much of this left at all. But you are going to cut a piece of this six and five eighths inches wide by seven and five eighths inches tall. Six and five eighths inches wide, seven and five eighths inches tall. Cut that, ink your edges, and then what you're going to do is you're gonna find the center of this green dotted paper. So we know this is, we know this is eight, so this is going to be four. And then you're going to find the center of this paper, the six and five eighths. And I just went like this and found my center. And you're going to put that down. And you are going to have like an eighth of an inch reveal on the top. So an eighth of an inch reveal, which is basically two rows of the dots. So you see those two rows of the dots. So I am not going to glue that down because my green paper is right underneath it. So I'm just going to adhere this down. It's centered in the middle and one eighth of an inch down, two rows from of the dots. Let me put that there. And that there. So now we have our yellow paper in. Next, you are going to cut a circle. If you have a circle, I have a stitch circle that is three and a half inch diameters. Three and a half inch diameters. Three and a half inch diameter. What I did with this circle die cut is I cut out this blue forget-me-not. This is from the 12 by 12 and it's cut with that three and a half inch diameter circle stitch die cut. If you don't have a stitched one, just something around three and a half inch diameter will suffice. And that's going to be using that forget-me-not paper from the 12 by 12. So that's going to be hanging over somewhere around here. Don't put it, put it down yet. 
Okay, what else? So we have our our shaker card. Then I got I have this die. It's from this company. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um Alina Craft Company. It's just a, it's just basically a scallop circle die. So I have this scallop circle die. This is four and five four and five eighths diameter scallop die. So I cut that out because I wanted something underneath my shaker element. So that's that white thing is that that scallop die, the circle scallop die. So you're going to cut that out. I cut it out with with white. I just used white. You can use off-white, but something to make it pop out. So there's mine. Then your shaker card, once you get everything in place, you're just kind of going to be putting it right like that. Oops, get those sequins down. So that's going to be kind of like that. Now, oh my gosh, <laughs> this element where it says sunshine and happiness with the ladybugs on top. You know I love this card because that's why I told you I ran, I, there's three of them. I think there's three of them because I used them all. What, what did I use? I used this card again. Get this. Oh my gosh, this is stuck. I used this card. Oops, where it says sunshine and happiness. I cut it right above. I'll show you again, right above the ladybugs where it looks like there is grass coming out. And I went all the way down to the bottom of the sunshine and happiness. So ladybugs all the way across. This part I used for the envelope card, the, the pocket envelope card, remember that? And then this I'm using for the bottom edge of our cover. Let me show you. That is from that card. It's from one end to the other. All the way one end to the other. So I cut that out. Fussy cut that little wave, ink the edges, and then I adhered it just at the bottom. Don't adhere it on the top because we're going to be sticking these little kiddos' feet in, in there. So you can adhere it to the bottom. So it's going to be with um, like a one eighth of an inch, not quite one eighth of an inch reveal down here. You're going to adhere this to the edge of the yellow paper. And you have like one, less than one eighth of an inch reveal down here. An itty bitty reveal. It's almost the same as this. Does that really matter? <laughs> Just make them the same. So let me cut something out that's similar to this so I can put it at the bottom. And I'll be right back. So I just cut this out. This is six inches long because this is a six inch journaling card. And it's about one and a quarter inches top with that wavy area where um, the grass is above the ladybugs. So you're going to put this flush with the yellow paper here. And then you're just going to have it so you have like an eighth of an inch um, of the green down here. So I'm just going to apply this. Don't want it to get on my, 
on my green paper because my green paper is still good. Oops, it's moved. This yellow paper is moved, so I'm just going to put a little bit down here to hold it. Remember, do not glue the top part yet because we're going to be sticking stuff down there. So flush with this edge here. So something like that. Now you have not adhered this down yet. Okay, so we're going to be working on this little element down here. So you've already cut out the circle forget-me-not. That was three and a half inch diameter. If you got the bundle from us, I don't have the piece because it's on my album, but it looks something like this. It has the center circle with the spokes and it just has that thin yellow edge around it. So this piece that's under these kiddos, you can see the spokes here, but you're gonna pull this piece out and it has a circle in the middle. So get this piece out. You're going to ink the edges of it and where that circle is in the middle, you're going to cover it up with a yellow cardstock. If you have something like this, this is the hole I cut out from my peekaboo card. I just put it right in the center. I just wanted something yellow. So you're going to put, you're gonna cover up that circle that's on the ephemera piece with another circle, the same size, about the same size, which is one and five eighths inch diameter. One and five eighths inch diameter. So then you're going to put that down on your your forget me not. Remember this one's this one's cut different. This is another um, one from the fairies collection, but it's not the same, the exact same, but it's similar. So you're going to put that element centered on the forget me not card. Then you're going to get these little kiddos. This is in the ephemera pack too. There's only one of them, and I've already put it down. Get the, this little element out, ink all the way around it. So ink all the way around it. And what I did is I kind of got them like in that orientation. So they're kind of, his eyes are basically looking straight at you. She's kind of looking up. Their feet are like that. This foot's up, this foot's up. This little foot is underneath the grass here. So this is not adhered down, so you're gonna just put his little foot underneath the grass. Her foot is right on top of the ladybugs there. So that's how their feet are. So this whole element, this whole circle element when you get it down, it's going to be sticking into the green part, the green about, let me see, not quite a half an inch, not quite a half an inch, and it's just above where your um, lady, the ladybugs are right here. So let me just try to get this quarter of an inch. What did I say? A quarter of an inch? No, a, a little, um, yeah, um, ba, ba, ba. it is not quite a half an inch. Quite a half an inch. Yeah. 
And this whole circle goes into, into the, the flowers here, this, this grass area here. So let me bring it back to you so you can see. It's just going underneath the grass, this circle, the, the blue forget-me-not circles, just going underneath the grass a little bit. So I'm just going to basically adhere this this down right here on on my yellow cardstock just to hold it in place. So once you have that down, your yellow thing, then you're going to go ahead and get your your little element that you made, and you're going to place that it, the the one that it, the one that comes with the um, collection is not this big, so it's not going to be. Nope, it does not stick into the grass at all. It's basically. Where the blue rim is here, that's where it ends. So it's going to be like that, where the blue rim ends. But that's just going to be centered on this card. And then you're going to cover it up with the yellow. It doesn't have to be this one. It can be anything from the collection that's yellow. You're not going to really see it. It's just going to be behind the kids. And then you're going to have um, put those kiddos in. Something like that. So let me just put a ruler so you can see. Um, here's the one inch mark. The border is like half an inch in the border of the circle. And the top of the circle is sitting about, see the top of the circle from the bottom is about four and an eighth. So something like that, it doesn't have to be exactly like that. You already have this in. And at the end, <coughs> because there was this area down here, I wanted to cover up um, this area here. So what I did is I just used some dies I have. I think with Graphic 45, I had some dies with my um, tags. I just cut a bunch of flower dies and I just kind of stacked them on top of each other, biggest to smallest, added a little blue center piece and then a tiny, tiny little red centerpiece. This is actually from my puncher, from my, um, just a little hole puncher. That was what came out when I punched a hole, tiny, tiny. And then behind it, I just put another piece from the ephemera collection, this little clover. I just popped it behind the flower to add something here. And then at the top up here, this is just from your chipboard elements. This is from the ephemera. I put that little things behind this chipboard element. This is basically right up to the edge of the yellow paper. And it is, let's see, I have to point here, um, a little over, it's, um, or a C, five eighths, about five eighths of an inch down from the yellow paper, something like that. So this is how everything looks. Your shaker card, when you when I put it down, the shaker itself is a half an inch down from the the top of the album 
And the shaker card is, I always have to do this. Um, the side here about. And then the last thing I did was add this little bee from the ephemera. This is from the ephemera too, so I just added that little bee. So not too difficult, it's just kind of placing everything. Um, have, a, have a look if you like this. Just kind of look at it and see how everything kind of fits. The hardest part was the shaker card, but I think I'm going to try try that method of putting the little black cardstock uh, card strip around here, and that will be much easier than what I did here. But this is solid. This piece is solid. It's not squishy like with the foam tape because this is solid. It is just stacked 110 pound cardstock. So this is actually really, really strong. Anyway, so that's it for the front cover. So there's the whole thing spread out on the backs open like this. Pretty darn cute. So that's it for little things.